guys, welcome back to All Day RC. Um, <clears throat> what should be uh, part one of the Tamiya Grasshopper build. Uh, I might possibly do all as one video just because I'm a little bit behind. Uh, so everyone else has is, is pretty much got theirs together. Unfortunately, because of work commitments, um, I've only been able to start this today, being Thursday, instead of um, Tuesday. So we'll get on with it. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see where we are. Everyone else's is looking awesome, um, you know. So uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, I'm hoping to be able to catch up with one today. So <clears throat> look. So one thing that I have managed to do. Move that up there. Out of the way. So one thing that I have managed to do is paint the body. Now this is optional. Paint this body. You don't actually need to. Um, <clears throat> now I've gone for something a little bit different when I've painted this. So as you can see, uh, it's blue, just a base, basic uh, blue. However, uh, this is actually glow-in-the-dark paint, so this body glows in the dark. Um, obviously that's going to be hard for me to show you, so what I'll do is I'll put a, a picture in now and you can see what, see what it looks like and see what you think. Okay, so as you can see, you get a fairly decent glow from that. Uh, my next step is I'm going to apply decals to this uh, later on. And then I'm going to use this universal clear lacquer on top to seal it. Now, I could put the lacquer on now and then the stickers, but I want to put the, um, the stickers on first so the lacquer helps seal the stickers. So I'll put that up out of the way. <clears throat> and then we'll start, um, start on the kit. So let's just box out. Let's see what we've got in there. I shall push this out of the way. I normally work on top of my instructions. So I'm going to put certain things to one side that I don't need. So I don't need the tyres. I don't need the wheel parts yet. <clears throat> well, looks I'm going to need that spur. And that's it for now. So I'm going to put the box down. I've got a few basic tools now to, to help me out. I went and bought a few cheap tools. Um, I just went to a local um, discount shop and picked up some very, very cheap tools. Okay, so. Cut these off the spurs. I say I'm putting bearings in this instead of the, um, the plastic bushings that come with it. And part of the reason for that is that I'm running a brush the system in this car. Uh, one thing I want to do is just um, cut the additional swarf off just to keep things neat and tidy. Get one of my gears. This is one of the first places that uh, I notice I'm going to need grease on. Now, ordinarily at home I would use the Tamiya grease but I'd also use my own grease to make sure I get plenty of grease on uh, what I'm applying it to, I don't have that option here because I don't actually have any extra. So this will be interesting to see um, how far the grease actually goes in the kit. Right, getting quite low on that grease already, but um, like I say, I'm probably putting far too much on just because I'm used to used to doing that. Right, so that gear wants to go on prior. I'm just going to push this one out slightly. So, slip this one in, like that, you hear it click into the, uh, the bearing. I've got this smaller bearing here, which on here is BM1, and that just slides into the top there, like so, and that's all nice and, uh, and free to move there. So we can now go ahead and put that down and we can move on to this next part, which involves putting together effectively the um, differential. So these aren't a sealed differential or anything like that. They're a fully open diff on this. They just um, require a little bit of uh, oil and grease on. So normally, I've already got greasy fingers, so I shall push them in the holes like so. <clears throat> Take our spider gears. This only has three spider gears in this style of diff. And we'll drop them into place. 
So we can look at putting the, the second half of the uh, transmission together. So exactly the same, just in reverse. So pop it in like so. Add some grease. The main thing is, guys, when you're doing this, when you're now building your kit yourself, um, this is going to give you the ability to know uh, what you need to do for repairs in a diff gear. Now, one thing I'm going to point out, I am out of grease now, and I don't think I've got enough grease on this outer gear. Uh, so that's something that in the future I'll probably open this up again before I do too much running. Now I shall bring these two into each other. Double check and make sure I haven't left any bearings in it or anything silly like so. And straight away, before I even screw it up, I can turn the gears and go, yes, that feels like it's free to move. So I've got four screws that I'm putting in at this stage. So that's two. So I've got this bit to put on B3, which looks like this little chappy here, which is a little oiling cover. So pretty quickly we've we've gone through step one and two, and we've got the uh, the transmission essentially is together. One of the advantages with a two-wheel drive vehicle, you know, it does make life simpler. Okay, so this is a bit now which is going to be a little bit awkward because uh, as discussed in the previous video, I don't actually have my brushless system. So I'm going to have to go ahead for now and fit the stock motor in. Yeah, so I'll snip him out again, like do the rest of the bits. And then again, just cut the excess off. You know, if you need to use a knife in places, which you sometimes do. Okay, so two motor holes there and that goes that way up and requires um, two nuts putting in that early on, two BA5s. So we shall look these bad boys up. Okay, so it's tight, we'll just give it a little nip. Okay, here we are. Bag C. Get these two ones here. Okay, so they're going to be going through this cover. It's got to me written on it, so we'll make sure that that's the right way up. I'm a bit funny with things like that. Um, put them through, and you see that now gives us two screw heads there. Then they're going to screw into where we put those uh, those nuts earlier on. So. Okay, so the motor's all nice and tight and solid there. Okay, so the next step, we're actually going to go and attach this transmission on um, again. It's saying that we need grease. Um, I don't have any, so um, it's uh, going to make it all very interesting. And, um, Screw this side in, slide the transmission in, and I'll screw the other side down. So, same screws again, these uh, three by 12s. Okay, squish that in there. Now, obviously, this is going to have suspension to. Uh, Give it its movement, but we just double check. Yep, that's free to move. I can go ahead now and screw this side in. These are these uh, little side braces that we see. The picture on the box. Okay, give them a snip out. Maybe you're cutting pieces like this. It's always um, worth double checking that you're actually cutting the right piece because sometimes like this bit of swarf here can look like the framework and you wouldn't want to accidentally snip a piece of framework off to find that you then can't put it back. Okay, that's one side. We we'll go ahead now repeat the process and get the uh, the opposite side one attached. Okay, 
that's that stage complete. Okay, so the next step looks like we are going to go ahead and put some shocks together. And that is it, it's as simple as that. So it's purely an air core spring uh, shock construction. So really, really simple. Nothing, uh, nothing too special there, but if it does the job, you've got to remember this is a, a budget kit. You know, uh, there are oil filled shocks available for this kit. I, I did look into purchasing them actually to do this, but they are rather expensive. Um, so if I bought the oil filled shocks and a couple of other components as upgrades for this, I'd actually spend more than what the kit cost on a couple of added bits, so that definitely wasn't going to happen. We shall get the other side in place. I'm probably going to go and do the top first. Okay, so again, washer. Okay, so that's that bit done. Now down here, you've actually got um, where it says uh, setup required for the optional 540 motor, and it's an 18 tooth pinion, um, which I'm rather pleased about, because that's what I've bought, which I worked out that I thought I needed. Um, right, there we are, <clears throat> happy with that. Okay, so we've got this uh, next stage now is uh, setting up the steering servo. I'm actually hoping that mine gets delivered today. So I'm gonna skip that part uh, for the okay, case. So these are your front wishbones, if you wish to call them that. Your front arms. Got the cast blocks in here. Okay. We can see how our steering is uh, going to come together. Okay, this part here, this is for the front um, shocks. And again, same screws, 3 for 12 that a lot of these have, have been through the build. Okay, that's them together. We can now uh, skip round. Roll the page over. Okay, we know that we're attaching uh, parts of the bottom um, of the shocks, and we've got some little um, bits here for the uh, turnbuckles. Okay, so that's those two components in place. Need these next two for the shocks. Okay, so that's them all constructed now in accordance with um, these instructions. Uh, the next um, point looks to be that we're going to apply them to the uh, chassis tub. So we'll turn that upside down. There's two. Okay, so that's that plate in there. That's held them in, in place so they now can't fall out. It would appear that we can now put the front bumper on, which comes as a separate uh, piece on its own. So we set that on there. Same size screws again, three by uh, three by twelves. Need to be a bit of a pattern horizon here. Um, but it's good. It's one of the ways that that uh, Tamiya can keep the prices down on their kits. You know, they can limit the number of different screws that are required. It uh, keeps the the cost of production and packing down, which you know inevitably keeps the cost down to us, which is important, you know, it's um, it's not a cheap hobby. Kits like these luckily allow, um, you know, they do allow people to get into it on, on a budget, which is good, and you still end up with a good quality kit that you can build yourself for, um, in this day and age, which is, you know, very little money, um, it, you know, compared to what some of the bigger vehicles cost. Okay, and then uh, we get the smaller of the, the springs. You remember the ones for the um, the rears were slightly wider. Line them up. 
Let's screwdriver and screw them in place. So a very basic um, shock shaft setup. Uh, very basic indeed. However, um, it works. And again, you know, this is um, this is really is at the low end of Tamir's um, range, budget-wise. So, you know, you've got to bear in mind here that um, we are building a a budget kit. So therefore, you know, little things like um, the shocks being designed the way they are, uh, to keep the budget down. At the end of the day, that works. It does its job. <coughs> Now, if I put this brushless system in it, mm. not if, when, um, if that doesn't handle quite um, how you would expect, or you do it yourself, you upgrade the motor and you think, oh, God, you know, this, uh, the shocks don't seem to be um, holding up well and things like that, just bear in mind that I'm probably putting something like four times the amount of power through this than what it's actually designed for. Um, but the fact that a kit you know, it's been out 33 years and people still want to buy it and build it. Really, you know, that does say a lot for Tamiya's um, quality and standing in the RC community. Okay, that's the two front shocks then assembled. So the next stage now is going on to wheels. Uh, got the basic chassis assembled. I shall sit the body on. Um, just so you guys can have a sort of look, give you an idea of um, what she's going to look like. Remember what I said as well, this is um, glow in the dark, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, I should probably fit this lower <coughs> battery compartment door in a minute, but that'll be, that'll be it. I'll come back and, um, and film part two. And then, like I say, it's going to be a few days till I get home and get all my equipment um, before I have it all uh, up and running um, properly to show you guys. Right, I hope that's been helpful. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, um, you know, check out Steve De Clark's channel. Uh, also, uh, uh, JD JDPASL. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for all these. He's also built one of these. He's running it brushless. His channel is outstanding. Um, also, buy it, break it, fix it. Absolutely superb channel. Um, been a fan of that for quite some time. Good, honest channel. Good, honest reviews, builds. He's also building himself a Tamiya Grasshopper. So check out his channel. That's buy it, break it, fix it. I shall put a link in the description. Right, thank you very much guys. See you back for the next part.